It's time to plan for your Cedar Point vacation in 2024. So let's get down to it. Let's go. What's up, cool people? Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Today we are talking about every single facet of your Cedar Point vacation for 2024. Uh, from parking to hotels to the rides that are there to strategies that we can use. Every single part of your Cedar Point vacation is going to be covered in this video. So let's get into this really, really fast here. Although at the same time, this is going to be an incredibly long video. So I always bring a snack. <laughs> So grab yourself a snack and let's get ready. Let's go. Cedar Point 2024. Let's do this. Now in a video of this kind of scope, there may be all kinds of people checking out this video. We really just talk about coasters from very much a base level on this channel and um, not just coasters, but the experience and how you can do everything at certain parks, things like that. Uh, so if you haven't pressed that subscribe button, we'd love to have you guys join us for that kind of content. Um, but we are starting from the very beginning because uh, basically there may be people here who have never been to Cedar Point before and are looking at maybe taking their very first trip. We might have some kids who are looking at their very first trip and we might have some senior citizens who are looking at their very first trip and you're all welcome no matter who you are. So Cedar Point is an amusement park that was started in 1870. It's one of the oldest amusement parks in the US. Um, it is a very, very fun place to visit. It is also situated right on an island. It's always had a little piece of land that's been connected to it, which now is a Cedar Point Drive uh, that has tons of beautiful houses on it. But the only way to access Cedar Point was by water. You, you took a ferry to Cedar Point from downtown Sandusky. So we'll get into more of the transportation, things like that. But basically it started because it was this beautiful peninsula island um, that people wanted to go to and kind of spend a weekend and they brought just a few attractions in one piece at a time, but it always had a beach and it was always a place to uh, want to hang out on a weekend. So that is definitely the reason why people wanted to come and visit Cedar Point. And it's been a lasting success <laughs> ever since then from like the production of the very first bathhouses to the addition of some coasters and the, the attraction circle and things like that. So um, anyway though, it is located, like I already alluded to a little bit, in Sandusky, Ohio. It includes 70 attractions and 18 now coasters. Um, it had 18 before, but we had several that kind of made their rounds out and then we had to redo them. Or also, of course, Top Thrill Dragster uh, was uh, closed down for several years there. But this year is the first year when Top Thrill Dragster will be open again. Um, and we will be talking about that. Top Thrill Dragster is the second tallest coaster in the world. Um, although soon to be third tallest coaster in the world, um, because there is a new coaster called Flight of the Falcon, I think. Flight of Falcon flight, something like that. Um, but that's happening overseas. Um, so definitely, um, a really elite place to come and hang out, um, especially for some of the biggest coasters that you could possibly find at Cedar Point. Um, also, Cedar Point is renowned for having broken multiple records. Um, Cedar Point was the very first coaster place to have a roller coaster over 200 feet. Um, it was also the very first to have a roller coaster over 300 feet and the very first to have a roller coaster over 400 feet. It's also broken multiple other records too but uh, I mean those records I don't care about as much they're usually based along a very specific coaster type and creating the tallest coaster of that type um, at Cedar Point also but yeah less less exciting than the Coaster Wars era where they were gaining by a hundred feet every time they built a new coaster it is kind of right in between Cleveland and and Toledo, and it's right along Lake Erie. Uh, so it's a beautiful place. It is not one of the most populated areas though. Because of that, there is a little bit less in the way of transportation to get there. Uh, you could take
take Greyhound, or you could take also rail if you wanted to do that passenger rail. Um, but either one of those is gonna be a little bit sketchy. You're gonna end up getting there at like 3 a.m. I think was the last itinerary that I looked at. It is a possibility if you wanted to go do that and get a hotel for part of a night, <laughs> then that may be an option for you. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. And Sandusky is more of a car city. Um, it's not really a city that's going to have a lot of public transportation. There are some bus lines and I've actually featured those on the channel before and like some van lines that you can take. There are also some uh, Ubers, of course, that you can take and taxis that you can call for. I actually would probably recommend less taking an Uber and more taking a taxi because there's a dedicated number that you can call to make sure that you find someone um, who is working for the service, where Uber is gonna be a little bit more spotty. Um, and of course you're using the app, so you're not actually talking to an actual human being to get you where you need to go. All right, so Highway 6, once you get into, or near Sandusky anyway, um, will take you into Sandusky itself and also into the park. Um, or very close to the park. So Highway 6 is this side entrance coming in from the west, uh, which is usually what I take coming in from Ohio, or from Indiana, sorry for me. Um, it does kind of take you through downtown a little bit, kind of in a weird way. All the roads in Sandusky are weird, just letting you know. Um, and then it will finally take you along Cedar Point Drive from there. Um, so it's a route that's somewhat close to what I just did there. Not, not exact, but it's not exact science, but it's somewhat close to that. Coming in from Highway 90, you have no access to get onto uh, Highway 6 or onto 2. So because of that, you actually take the highway and you get onto 4. And it takes you directly into town, straight in along Highway 4, and then basically you end up in the exact same situation, taking some of the same roads to go. A lot of the roads feel very like, wait a minute, why have I gone right three times here? <laughs> I should have gone in a circle, right? Um, that's basically what it feels like. It feels like you take a lot of rights getting there, and it's because you have to go off to the side of the city. The last one is if you come in from the east, um, you can come in either from two or from uh, from 90 um, and get on to Milan Road and Milan Road will take you right into town and that takes you right through all the things uh, that you uh, that we love about Cedar Point. Um, there are a couple of other options, a couple of other roads that you can take from that point also, um, including these right here, but basically you're gonna have to kind of go out of your way just a little bit in order to get to Cedar Point. Um, so, or at least that's the way it usually feels. But Milan Road is where all the other attractions are. So if you're wanting to go to any of the outskirts attractions from Cedar Point, any of the indoor water parks, um, uh, any of the like event center spaces, those are all going to be found right in that area, um, including also the mall, the Sandusky Mall, or any of the other like um, restaurants, uh, Applebee's and Buffalo Wild Wings and stuff like that. You can find those right there. Here is why I think Sandusky is confusing um, because it, you have multiple roads here that you can potentially take, but they all kind of take you out of the way. But it looks very clearly like Sandusky has some options laid out that they could have used that they've saved. So here is Cedar Point Drive um, here. So you can take this road, Cleveland Avenue, or you can take Highway 6, um, and then you have to kind of take them around in order to get to where you want to be along some of these uh, back roads, um, which, and along Perkins Drive or along Milan Avenue or Road. Um, but it seems very clear to me that there's this empty spot of land here where they could easily build a straight road taking you either to Perkins Avenue or even around Perkins Avenue and into onto Milan Avenue. Um, that would be super, super easy to be able to do. <laughs> um, 
But now, of course, it would require building a whole road, and I'm sure it would require a little bit of demolishing a few things, but it seems like they've even left it open um, so that it's all just kind of empty land, mostly all the way up to there. And I don't know why they don't make tourism a little bit easier by just creating this very, very straight uh, road that takes you straight in. I don't know if they want you to get closer to the city, if businesses want you to see more. I mean, there aren't even a lot of businesses at that point in Milan Road that you're going to be passing. I don't know what's stopping it, but it seems like someone must be stopping it at uh, in Sandusky. So if you're from Sandusky, please comment down below if maybe there's like a powerful family or, you know, people on the board or who knows what that just don't seem to want that kind of thing. Or if that's even an option, maybe it's land that's totally devoid of any possibilities of being able to be built on. I don't know. Um, but it, it seems really interesting to me that they have had this level of tourism there and have been unwilling to kind of make this straight shot there when it seems like it would be relatively easy to be able to do it. This video takes so long. <laughs> All right, now, if you are taking ride-sharing services at Cedar Point for any reason, including even if your car breaks down or whatever, there may be multiple reasons why you may need to call an Uber or a taxi, things like that. Um, if you need to do that, then it is this parking lot right here that you need to go to. That parking lot exists basically right underneath Blue Streak. Um, so that is where you need to go to find it. Uh, but there are specific routes that would help you to be able to get there. And I'm gonna show those to you right now. Now you can leave from underneath Val Raven. And going from underneath Val Raven would mean right up here where my mouse is right now. You cross the street and then there's a pathway, a walkway. That'll take you all the way down Perimeter Road and past the kennel services that they have. Um, there are a couple different fences and things like that that'll kind of get in the way, um, but you're you're open all the way through. I mean, you, you still can get there no matter what. Um, and then you do have to cross the street into that parking lot. So that is one way to do it. Um, the other way is to come in from the front entrance and to go around through the walkways and then you got, kind of go back through where they used to have like an old picnic area. Um, and right there, there's a spot where you can walk underneath Blue Streak and it'll take you right into that little lot where you can get into any kind of ride shares. They also have like some minivans uh, that you can pack full of people, things like that, um, to be able to get where you need to go, um, which would be whatever hotel you're at, things like that, of course, if it's ride sharing services. Of course, you also could find your way from the beach all the way up toward the front um, or through the park too, if you wanna do that and then follow the same route from there. Uh, so those are your options to get to ride sharing services if you wanted to be able to do that. Um, of course, without being able to get to Cedar Point, you can't get to Cedar Point. So that's kind of our number one most important thing uh, that we need to figure out for you guys and while you're planning to figure out what you need to do in order to get this trip off the ground. Now, on top of taking ride sharing services, there is also an option of taking the ferry. And this is like the most romantic option that you can have. Um, it is kind of the way that Cedar Point started, was people had to go from downtown Sandusky to, to take a ferry. Um, there are two ferries that you could possibly take. You could take the one from Kelly's Island. And in order to do that, you'd have to go from Port Clinton to put in bay to Kelly's Island to Cedar Point. Uh, but that is an option for you. Or of course you could go from downtown Sandusky and uh, downtown Sandusky has a Jet Express right there uh, ready for you to take it whenever you may want to. Uh, it's definitely a fun option for you to be able to do and it's passenger. It's not uh, one of the big steamers that you load cars onto. So it's just a fast 
jet that you get to take. Uh, so either way is a good option for you to take. For me, it's it's a goal of mine that I'd really like to do. I've just never done it yet uh, to go from downtown Sandusky into there. Also, parking in downtown Sandusky is free. I don't know how long that lasts, though. I don't know if you'll be ticketed after a certain amount of time or things like that. Uh, but you can park in downtown Sandusky and go. It is fairly expensive, though, to ride the Jet Express. Um, so you're still gonna have to pay that fee, but it is a good option if you come in, say, midday and uh, on a Halloween weekend's uh, time and it's the park is just completely packed and there is no parking left um, that is a good option for you to take it then because you get in uh, much faster and you would bypass that whole uh, group of cars that's waiting to get in because there aren't enough spaces for people to park now if you do take a car one way or another you're going to have to pay for parking unless you buy a pass we'll get into that in just a little bit here Parking for just a single day ticket and just a time coming without a pass is $25 per time that you visit. Um, or you can also, I believe, find some deals online for $13.50, but that's only if you buy things ahead of time. If you buy things ahead of time, usually with Cedar Point, you get a little bit of a discount on that. So like you can see, the front parking lot is really kind of divided into three different sections. The main parking lot, we have the prestige lot, and then we also have the overflow parking lot. Now the rideshare parking lot I already talked about, and it exists right here up toward the front of uh, the main parking lot. And then the marina parking lot is kind of this long stretch of land uh, right next to the marina. Um, that is an option only if you are a marina member. So if you actually have a boat that you park there, that is something that you can use. And then finally, the last parking lot, and often one of the more sought after parking lots is at the very back, and that is the water park entrance. So the water park parking lot or the parking lot for Cedar Park Point Shores is at the very back of the park and it is this area right here kind of between where the rv or cedar point uh lighthouse point is and then also uh where the uh water park exists something about that back parking lot they used to open it for early park entry but they do not open it anymore or they didn't last year anyway so they turned people away from that back parking lot whenever you were back there so there was just a sign up there saying turn around you know you have to come back which means you basically wasted your early park entry time uh, in order to come back around up to the front and go so don't go back there if you're there for early park entry come in go to the prestige slot but don't park at the back because you're going to waste your time coming to the back at that point if you come in at normal time then use that back parking lot it opens i believe at 10 o'clock especially on days when the um, water park is open as i mentioned also they do have a dog kennel that you can use so if you're doing some camping or if you are doing some boating or if you're just bringing your dog for the day which i've done before um, you can board your dog there and you do have to pick them up before park close um, it's, it's a nice place to go. It's not the, uh, Ritz for the dogs by any means. Uh, you do need to feed and water them, although they will give them water, but you have to take them to the bathroom and make sure they have food throughout the day. Um, and then they will text you if they if your dog has an accident during the day, uh, for you to come clean up after them. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a pretty simple process, but I do have a full video on the entire process. Also, if you want to go check that out, actually, I have a couple of them. So go check those out if you'd like to. Now that you've figured out how you're going to get to Cedar Point, now we can start the fun part. Let's start the planning. Let's go. So very first thing that you need to figure out is when are you going to go? Throughout the year, there are several different seasons, kind of, to Cedar Point. This year, we have the summer season. We have then Boardwalk Nights also, which is going to be an event out on the boardwalk. Then we have the school season once all the students start going back to school, and then we go back to mostly just weekend time with that. We have the between season, which is kind of the best time to get on rides because it is the time between 
regular, like all the shows and all the full Steam stuff that they have to uh, transitioning into Halloween weekends, which is definitely primo time for rides, not primo time for shows or other activities during that time. And then we also have Halloween weekends. Um, now, each one of those things has their pros and cons to them, and we will be talking about them more in depth in just a little bit later on in this video. Once you've figured out what time you would like to come here though, then now let's also talk about how many times you can come to visit Cedar Point. I come all the time, most people don't. Most people at most are going to come twice a year um, for like two extended trips. But some people are going to come more often or less often than that. If you're going to come more than two times throughout the year, then don't worry about um, how many days you spend here altogether. You're close enough that you can do it as often as you want to. If, however, you need to come from out of town, which is probably the majority of people watching this video, then you're going to probably only come once, maybe twice in a season. And those are probably going to be more full-scale vacation times times for you when you come. Um, so we're going to kind of encourage, uh, at least I'm going to encourage you to come usually for three days. Um, usually that would give you two days for uh, visiting the park and being able to do everything at the park, having to spend less money on that, which we'll talk about in just a little bit here. And also you can come to um, maybe a day of rest or a day on the beach or a day at the water park if you would like to do any of those. Uh, so it gives you kind of an extra day to do something. I would really encourage, I mean, honestly, at this point, I would encourage probably more like four or five days even to spend at Cedar Point if you can only come one time a year because it's gonna give you plenty of time to be able to spend those two days at the park, plus maybe have an off day where you can just relax a little bit, hang out on the beach, and have a day when maybe you can go do something out in the town also because there's a lot of different stuff to do. Again, something else that we will talk about later on in this video. Speaking of budget, the tickets are going to be $45 per day at Cedar Point or if you buy them at the gate, they're $82. Uh, so it can be a pretty substantial investment to come to Cedar Point. Um, it is an expensive place to come if you don't plan ahead. Um, if you're going up to the gate, you're gonna spend your most amount of money. But if you buy things online ahead of time and you kind of know what to expect and what you're wanting to do before you actually get there, then you're going to have a little bit more of a budget-friendly trip. It's still expensive, but it's not going to be nearly as expensive. If you are there at Cedar Point, for more than two days or even two days though, usually it's worth it to buy a pass. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So like I said, the single day pass is going to be your more expensive option usually, um, but you can get gold passes, prestige pass, and um, the summer pass also. Now each of those passes is also going to include your $25 parking fee. So in that $25 parking fee for each day alone, like the summer pass is $99. You're going to have spent $50 parking just in and of itself, not to mention two days worth of tickets. So if you're coming for even two days, it's worthwhile to buy that pass, um, or at least in my opinion, it's worthwhile, especially with that pass. We'll talk about the others also. All right, so I said the summer pass was $99. It is actually $110 for only the summer. That's what the benefits get you for that pass. Now for the 2024 summer pass, that does also give you a bring a friend discount. It gives you 10% off food and merchandise and it gives you pass perks rewards. The gold pass also gives you unlimited Hollow Weekends stuff where the summer pass does not get you into Hollow Weekends and it gives you br the bring a friend discount, 10% off food and merchandise, pass perks rewards and 10% off hotels. Also, you can get two free pre-K passes uh, for your kids if you if you have any kids under the age of, I, I think it was five, but it, it's really not an age, it's like a height limit. Um, also with um, the 2024 Prestige Pass, you have 
all of the perks there um, for unlimited summer visits, fall and Halloween weekends visits. Uh, you have preferred parking. You get access to VIP areas where you can just sit and relax. You also get 15% off of merchandise. Um, you get rewards. Um, you have the pre-K passes, the early entry to the park, and the water park, which you do not get with your 2024 gold pass this year. It's only prestige pass, which worries me, but whatever. I, I guess that's what we have. Um, and then I just think it's going to be very busy uh, with, the, with the prestige pass. A lot of people are going to be buying that prestige pass for the purposes of being able to get into the park early um, because that's the only option where in past years, gold or uh, platinum passes were able to get in early. You also get one single use fast lane every single day that you can use and you have two free bring a friend tickets, which I did make take advantage of this last year also. On top of all of that, you can get the All Parks Passport where you can add that onto your ticket uh, for any of these passes uh, that do give options there. But uh, the prices that you're looking at for the Gold Pass, you are looking at a price of $145. And for the Prestige Pass, you are looking at a price of $350 for that pass for all year long. So you're spending a lot of money. Um, also, with each of those, you have the All-Year Passport, which I think is an additional $100, but then sometimes it's a little bit more. With Prestige, I think it was a little bit more than that also, because you're getting more access to every single park and not just to one park or a, an additional park. Um, so you can go to any Cedar Fair park across the country. At this point, yes, Cedar Fair is merging, at least it's looking like it, with uh, Six Flags. However, it does look like there's some stuff getting in the way with that with Monopoly, so it's possibly not going to happen. But my point in that is your ticket is or your pass is not going to get you into any Six Flags parks yet. Now, on top of that, you can buy Fastlane per day that you come, or you could buy the all-season Fastlane. Now, the Fastlane for an individual day is going to be around $200. That's a lot of money. What they've done recently, though, last year they started this. I don't know. I don't have any information on whether they will do this or not, but I'm assuming they are going to. Um, if, the, if the program was a success, I'm sure it will be back. Um, but each individual day you can buy an individual fast lane for individual rides so if maverick just has an hour and a half wait and you don't want to wait that long but you see that it has a pretty decent fast lane line you can go right out in front of the entrance to that and you can buy an individual fast lane for that ride it works very similarly to disney genie plus um but it's like a paper fast lane that you can just walk up to the front and do it you just have to buy it at a booth where someone is already um now i don't know if that's going to be changed if it's going to be on the app this year i, I mean there are lots of different options for that this is just what they did last year um i would recommend doing that rather than buying fast lane because you don't have to opt into anything you don't have to buy disney genie plus like you do at disney in order to get into that um, instead all you have to do is just walk up to one of these individual fast lane booths and just buy one fast lane for something that you want it's a much cheaper much better way to do it however you are going to spend a premium on that one ride um, I, the funny thing is I've seen at other parks like even Kings Island it was like five ten dollars something like that to ride fast lane at Cedar Point you're looking at twenty five dollars uh, per per ride <laughs> that you want to do uh, which is a huge savings in comparison to the 225 or even more money than that um, that you're going to pay per day day for the entire fast lane band that you wear on your wrist but 
it's still a very hefty expense for one experience that you're going to do at Cedar Point. Again, still a good cost savings, especially if there's just one ride that you're really wanting to get on and that ride maybe has a very long wait. It could be a great way to give yourselves the best strategy that you could use to get around the park. I haven't exploited it yet, but we will this next year. So press the subscribe button to check out more about individual fast lane as long as they're doing it this year. Now, one thing you do need to know is that there is a difference between fast lane and fast lane plus. This is a very key important thing because you'll see on the website that you could buy fast lane or fast lane plus, and I think a lot of people will fall into the trap of oh, fast lane, it's like $100 cheaper. We might as well just get that, right? It'll give us all the same things. It will not. First of all, with any fast lane ride, um, there are two rides that do not get on fast lane at all. Uh, so if you're looking at Cedar Creek Mine Ride or you're looking at Iron Dragon, which Iron Dragon can get somewhat hefty weights, but Cedar, well, Cedar Creek Mine Ride can get hefty weights too. But if you're wanting to do either one of those, um, then that those are really important to know that those do not fall on fast lane in any possible way. You don't have any fast lane options for that. Fast lane plus only includes the top three or four, I think it's the top four coasters at Cedar Point. So that would be Millennium Force, that would be Steel Vengeance, and that would be uh, Maverick. And then now that would also mean um, top Thrill 2. Hey guys, I'm sitting here at B-Dubs editing like you do, and I have discovered that this actually includes only one time on Top Thrill 2 for Fastlane Plus. Um, so if you are wanting to do Top Thrill 2 at more than one time, and you're wanting to shell out the money for it, if you do have the all-year pass, it'll work. So that, that would work for all your fast lane, but if you don't have all your fast lane, the fast lane plus will only work one time. I think this is probably a really good way for Cedar Point to try to boost those individual fast lane sales that they have. Um, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of mad about this, honestly. Uh, but it is a thing that's happening. So I'm letting you guys know right now. So be aware of that if you're buying them. There is a reason why Fastlane Plus is substantially more expensive because it is much more in demand. I don't think buying Fastlane is ever worthwhile. Fastlane Plus might be worthwhile depending on the person and what you're wanting to do. And we'll talk about that more in strategy later on today. All right, let's talk about the gates at Cedar Point. Um, Cedar Point has four different entrances that you can come in through, and some of them I think are pretty unknown by the general public. So we're gonna get to know a little bit more about these gates and where we actually can go while we're at Cedar Point. Of course, the one that everyone's gonna know is the main gate. This is the one that Gatekeeper swings right above. It's beautiful. Of course, it's fantastic. It's a great place to walk through. Um, and that's up at the very front of the park. So that one obviously is, is pretty clear. Um, then we have two lesser known ones um, that take you out to the beach. I, it's amazing to me how many people don't even realize that there's a beach. You can even see the beach from the park now. And I do feel like Cedar Point is encouraging use of the beach more and more and more and more. There was a time when you were not allowed out on the beach. That was like exclusive hotel breakers area. And I think that's why there's still a lot of people who think, well, yeah, the, the beach is off limits. Like we're not allowed out there. That's not true. <laughs> you can go out on the beach. There are two entrances to take you out there. And in order to get back in, you either just have to have your hand stamped or you need to have your uh, pass with you. If you have a pass for all season long or for one of the summer passes, um, then you can come straight back in with the use of your pass. Um, there's no like lockouts or anything like that. So you can go back and forth. It's for use for people going to hotel breakers, of course. Um, so you could go take your nap during the day or things like that. But anybody can go hang out on the beach. You can take your own nap out on the beach. I have done it before. It, go take advantage of it. It's, it's a great place to go. But these entrances onto the boardwalk are right here, right next to Windseeker. Um, and that is on the new boardwalk. So that's the new boardwalk entrance. You can walk right out there. Um, or you can also go to Magnum and right underneath where Magnum is, 
um, you you walk under Magnum to get out of out of the park. So you can enter um, right there or exit the park right there, whichever way you're you're coming. Um, so that's another great way. And that is also, that serves also as your entrance into Cedar Shores, which we'll talk about in just a little bit here. You also, as a final place, we uh, I've mentioned it a little bit already, um, you can get out of the park by going underneath Val Raven. Um, and on this map, it's very hard to see, but uh, you can enter right here or exit right here and that's where you're going to want to exit if you wanted to go to famous daves or if you wanted to go out on the marina um or just kind of walk around on on the like walking area there uh there's a whole path there where you could walk around uh it's a great place to have a smoke or things like that too if you are a smoker um so there are just a lot of different things that you can do there but also that's where i would walk my dog whenever i brought my dog to cedar point now <laughs> there are tons of different rides um, and areas of Cedar Point. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of the park layout and where the different rides are that you're going to find. There are basically like four areas where the rides are really concentrated into. And we'll talk about those more also, but we're going to choose another color and check out where all of those things are that you're going to find at the park. Now, to me, I've always found Cedar Point's layout just a little bit confusing. Um, it's It was added on to kind of piece by piece. And actually, the back part of the park where Frontier Town is right now was added very separately from the front part of the park. So it almost seems like its own encapsulated little circle because it was at one point. And then they added more to it and then they added more to it. So because they've added and added and added on to this park for so long, um, there's just a lot of weird stuff to it. It's a pretty cohesive layout at this point, and they keep making it better and better and better, but it's still a little bit confusing. So let's talk about where all the rides are um, in relation to the paths. The very first ride that you're going to see is Magnum. That's Raptor, you absolute doofus. So Magnum, Blue Streak off to the side, Val Raven right next to that. That's kind of your first cluster. On top of that, we have Gatekeeper, Wild Mouse. So there's another cluster kind of, or you can kind of cluster all of those together. All the front rides are all five of those. On top of that then, we have Magnum, Corkscrew. And the problem with this map is it's very confusing. It's very easy to get lost inside this map because you have these layers of rides that are so tall. If you look at like a Disney map, you don't have that. So it's a lot easier to see what you're looking at. With with Cedar Point, it's just not the case. <laughs> it's a lot harder to see where you're going. Top Thrill 2, Gemini, right back behind the tall part of Top Thrill 2. Um, so again, another cluster. We've got four rides there. So five rides at the front of the park, Four rides on the Gemini Midway. We'll talk about that later. Then we're going to head back to Frontier Town. Back here we have the entrance to Steel Vengeance. We have the entrance to Cedar Creek Mine Ride. And we have the entrance to Maverick. So that makes our third area where we would have clusters of rides uh, to be found pretty easily. This is kind of important to know for planning purposes because it'll really help you visualize in your head where you're going to go and where you can get to faster uh, so that you can ride several rides at one time and then move on to the next place. Now, our very last one is Millennium, uh, the Millennium Midway. Uh, this is actually what used to be considered um, the Frontier Trail. And the Frontier Trail is still there, um, kind of, but the Millennium Midway kind of took up a part of that. Right in here, we have three more coasters. We have Millennium Force, Rougarou, and we have Iron Dragon. I'm kind of circling an approximate area because, it, again, it's kind of difficult to see, but at least then that gives you an idea of where each part of the park is and where each ride exists. Um, so as you're going around the park, Remember that you have those three. You, it, they kind of come in groups of three with the exception of the Gemini Midway, which was three last year. And then up at the front of the park, we have five coasters that are all in one 
big area. Um, and also, this will give you a bit more of an idea when I start talking strategy of where we're supposed to go, um, where kind of the middle back and middle right, middle left, and then front is, um, because those are the zones I'm talking about. The middle would be corkscrew and uh, Gemini, or the middle left would be Millennium and um, and Rougarou, or you could go to the back, which would be kind of the big rides at the very back. Now, we also have a slew of flat rides and I'll kind of circle general areas for where all of them are. We have a whole bunch of flat rides um, that are on the boardwalk and these are all gonna be in yellow. Those different flat rides can be found all over in that area. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, or you can also find several different flat rides along the main midway. You also have a ton of flat rides along the Gemini Midway um, that you can find along with a couple of games. I mean, it is a, a pretty clear proxy for a Midway. Um, and then you also have like the, the boat ride that Cedar Point has, um, some other kind of bigger rides there. And then you have just a couple of flat rides uh, sp splattered about inside uh, Frontier Town. So you can go check those ones out also. Um, so yeah, I, there's not a ton of flat rides everywhere, but there are some flat rides that you can find uh, sp splattered about Cedar Point uh, that you can go check out. Now, we're gonna also talk about where all the different main pathways are that you can get onto, and maybe a couple of different tips and tricks that you can find within those pathways that can help you get from point A to point B. Um, so let's talk about that. We're gonna start um, with, at the very beginning, of course, because it's a very good place to start, um, and go up to the very front of the park. Now here you have a big pathway up and down the main midway, of course. Um, from the main midway, you can enter onto the Valraven pathway. It kind of takes you off to the side and it'll take you over to Blue Streak also. Um, or you can also get over to the boardwalk. And since my last video on this topic, the boardwalk has changed pretty substantially. So you still have the main like square that was there before, but you also have another main square that kind of takes you around the boardwalk, kind of the second amount, and it'll take you past the new pavilion and all of that. Um, and then of course there is an exit onto the beach from there. Now this beach, the boardwalk, um, will take you all the way down to the parking lot so you can get all the way into the parking lot all the way to the front of the park or it'll also take you if you continue following it there's a spot where it goes to the right or to the left it always seems like you should just go to the left the left will take you to the second entrance to Cedar Point or it'll take you to to, to the Magnum entrance or it'll take you to Cedar Point Shores also um, so you can follow that and it'll either take you up to the main entrance or another entrance or it'll take you to Cedar Point Shores around this way to get into Cedar Point Shores. Cedar Point Shores is divided by Magnum. Um, so that's an important thing to know also. Or instead of turning to the right, you can turn to the left and you can follow the pathway. They'll take you all the way out to the Lighthouse Point, to Lighthouse Point. I sound, <laughs> I sound so inexperienced, to the Lighthouse Point. And we're gonna go down the Gemini Midway now um, from the main Midway, which we just were talking about. Um, that Gemini Midway is gonna take you all the way past Corkscrew and past uh, the new Top Thrill 2. It'll take you past Magnum and past Gemini. Um, and then we will be ready to enter Frontier Town from that point. Um, at Frontier Town, like I said, Frontier Town was its own encapsulated thing for a long time. So at this point, you can still see remnants of that, but it's not as bad. Um, at this point, Frontier Town will take you back to the biggest coaster at Cedar Point. It'll take you around in a circle beyond that. Um, and then there's kind of a little extra way to 
an extra area just to kind of sit and talk and wait for the train back at the very back of that. Um, so <laughs> that's one more thing that we have there. And then we have Frontier Trail. Frontier Trail is where all of the different uh, water rides are that you can hit. Um, there aren't a lot of rides on Frontier Trail. Like I said, water rides exist there. And really, the second, really only one water water ride actually is there. The second water ride, just the, the exit queue, uh, it spills out onto that. It will take you past some water rides, um, and then you can walk down toward the uh, Millennium Midway. Millennium Midway then has some shows and some cool rides that you can ride. And it also is home to a Coaster's Diner, which is kind of like the focal point at the very end of the main midway. Um, and then you connect to the main midway from that point. So it's, it's a very, it's actually a pretty simple layout when you can get it in your head, but you kind of have to see it in your head in order to understand where all it goes. Definitely need to know where all of the rest of the pathways are that you're going to connect to these different four clusters of coasters. Major show locations are also in these different areas that I've circled in green. Now, obviously we already talked about Cedar Point Beach and we talked about how it goes all the way up to Lighthouse Point and then all the way down to the parking lot at the end. Often when I get at the end of the day, I like to spend some extra time on the beach before I actually leave. Um, when I leave, I just walk down that pathway all the way down into the parking lot. Um, I love the beach and like I said, it should be something that you should put onto your park day. Um, it's definitely so much fun to be able to hang out there and definitely a relaxing place. My daughter loves hanging out there also and we've spent a lot of time there together. Also, um, one thing that's really fun about it is there will be sandbars that will come out uh, onto that into the beach and you never know where they are. You just go find them and you can find them usually by finding big um, boats that are just waiting out there and you'll see people where they'll be way out there but you'll see like their entire torso out of the water and you're like what in the world what's happening and it's because of a sandbar so go check out the sandbars go have some fun with those um it seems like people with boats really know how to find them well and uh they enjoy them a lot so it's just fun to be able to hang out there on cedar point beach and enjoy that there are two bars out there also um and they're in the in the hotel there are also like three restaurants that you can hang out there with. So you have everything you need for all day long to hang out on Cedar Point Beach, and it's definitely worthwhile. Also, please excuse my voice. My voice has been coming in and out a lot. It's starting to get better, but I was sick recently and lost my voice. So I hope it's not this, this way all year long, but I finally can talk. So I'm going to talk about this because you guys have been asking for this video. So I'm going to get it to you as quickly as I possibly can. Now, obviously with this, Cedar Point has different seasons. We've already talked about those seasons just a little bit, but I gave you just the lightest review. So let's actually talk about what these seasons are like. Obviously this time is the best time to be hanging out at Cedar Point as far as like heat goes. Um, it's the time when you're gonna wanna be out on the beach the most. It is also the time that's gonna make you want to rip your clothes off. <laughs> it's the time that's, that's the worst time as far as the heat goes. Um, it is the time that's best for water uh, rides and for going to the water park. Um, and sometimes it's really very necessary to get that. Now, of course, this also includes May. This, this includes from the very beginning of the park all the way through um, to like August. And so um, you'll have a lot of time to be able to have kind of some different weather. The beginning of the, of the year is going to be usually a little bit more rainy and a little bit more cold, honestly. Uh, but by the time that you reach late June, early July, you're going to have some scorching weather um, that really is like you'll get sunburnt um, and 
you will get very, very hot. Like I've had my shirt, I've said multiple times, like my shirt is just a state of mind at this point. It's not actually a shirt. It's just something that I have on my body. <laughs> it's, it's a do-rag, that's all it is. Um, it's just, it gets so hot on those days. So um, those days are really important to know that you can do some other things like go to the beach um, to cool off a little bit um, and take a little bit of time for yourself. Also making sure that you drink a ton of water is absolutely essential for Cedar Point on those days. Of course, then we also have boardwalk nights. Boardwalk nights is gonna be in the evening. I think it's gonna be very similar to Cedar Point nights, almost the exact same thing, I think. Um, I am growing a little bit wary of it, honestly, because I was kind of hoping that maybe they could splice together a whole bunch of different activities that they've done maybe having some food trucks, maybe having some uh, like food booths with special special items, um, special made items for us. Maybe having some great entertainment even inside the pavilion, maybe just someone playing some guitar or something, maybe doing a Wild, wild Frontier Nights kind of an idea with it also. But the more I look at it, the more I think they're probably just gonna have some glow sticks and some different like cubes and stuff that you can sit on out on the beach, uh, very similarly to what they had. That's not bad, I don't hate that. I, I think that was a pretty fun um, time of year when they had Cedar Point Nights, but they didn't just have Cedar Point Nights then. So I'm on the fence at this point. <laughs> we'll see if Cedar Point proves themselves with having some additional offerings for us or not. Um, but that is another time of year when they're going to have some additional stuff. Um, so if you're looking for some extras, then that's a great time to come also. Also throughout the summertime from like June, middle of June until August, um, ish until the end of August about um, they will be having productions they'll be having a lot of shows different fun things that you can go see those are always incredibly fun um, I, I am a huge advocate for live entertainment and I love seeing the ad entertainment that happens at Cedar Point um, so it's definitely worthwhile to go check those out and uh, I think would make it a more fun trip uh, to be able to have days when you could go see some different shows um, it just it just gives a more complete uh, feeling to to the experience of the park rather than just riding rides all day, which is great and I love going to do those also, but just doing some rides or doing some rides and having some entertainment to splice in between some rides, I think is definitely, uh, that's much more preferable. Also, just the entertainment at Cedar Point altogether is fantastic and worthwhile to go check out anything that they do. <laughs> now, I already mentioned it just a little bit, but between seasons, is kind of the best time to come for coasters. There are no shows at this point. They are prepping for the Halloween weekend shows. And this is really their in-between time to get things ready for Halloween weekends. So they're only open on the weekends, um, but getting to spend time there at this point, it just seems like people vacate the premises. They stop coming to Cedar Point. It's like people think they're closed during these weeks. Uh, so it's usually about two weeks uh, right in between um, at the early part of September. Um, so September comes, the, the park kind of shuts down, lots of stuff shuts down, the shows all stop, and you've got two weeks there where there's just some in-between time, just weekends for you to spend. And those weekends are the best time. If you're wanting to go see shows, you don't need a fast lane, you don't need anything. Those are your two most primo times to come. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. You can come in, you can do everything all in one shot so easy it's so fast and uh i was able to come with my best friend and his kids a couple of years ago and we just got on everything so fast it was fantastic it's always a fun time to come so definitely go check out cedar point early on in september if that's if you're really just looking for as many rides as you can get on that's your best time to come it's not as exciting the park closes earlier and there's less entertainment stuff um but it's always fun so go go check that out for rides and hollow weekends is always really fun also um of course i i've always loved coming to 
to Cedar Point for Halloween weekends. And uh, that's actually the time when I started coming. Uh, once I moved back to Indiana in 2016, I started coming to Halloween weekends every year with Nathan. Um, that was that was kind of when my love affair with Cedar Point began again, um, or really kind of just began. Um, but it was that time. So I love coming for Halloween weekends. It's always really fun. Haunted houses. They have haunted houses everywhere. Um, there are tons of different shows that you get to see. Um, some fantastic rides, some fantastic costumes, some fantastic drinks, some, <laughs> I mean, just everywhere you look, there's something extra, something special that's happening during Halloween weekends. And it's very much worthwhile to go check out. Um, I've absolutely loved it. And the last several years running they've just gotten things better and better for Halloween weekends especially as far as entertainment goes now the drawback with Halloween weekends is it is the busiest time of year um you like even beyond summer summer is busy but it's not that busy hollow weekends is like the the day it starts it's busy and then by the time you get to the last day of the season, it's so busy that you can barely move. Like, it, that's not really true, but th there are times when it bottlenecks on uh, Frontier uh, Trail. So e even then, there are times when it's like you can't move. So you just, like, that is the pro and con that you have of it. Don't come at two o'clock. If you come at two o'clock, there is a good chance you won't even have a place to come on the weekends. Now, the cool thing with Halloween weekends that I don't even know if everybody knows is they're open on Thursdays. Um, Cedar Point being open on Thursdays is like a love letter to locals and to people with passes um, because it is so, it's not even dead, it's still very busy but it's much more able to be able to do any rides or haunted houses that you want to do at the park during that time. Uh, so that is always a really fun thing to do. I love coming on Thursdays. I will get done with work and then I'll drive up and go, go ride rides until midnight and then come back and then go to work the next day because I love Cedar Point and I love Hollow weekends that much. Um, so it's so much fun. It is definitely worthwhile to go check that out. You can go check out all my videos on Hollow weekends also. Uh, if you'd like to do that, I have tons from this last season. I'll have a few posted down below also in the doobly doo. Now it's Cedar Point Shores time, baby. <laughs> You knew I had to do it. So Cedar Point Shores is a fantastic place to go visit. Um, you should definitely go check it out. Um, they have tons of stuff. I filmed a walk through this past year um, of everything that they have. So you can do go see that also if you just want to kind of see where things are and what's in what's in the area. But Cedar Point Shores has several different slides that you can go down. They do have a large wave pool and they also have a pool bar uh, that's really fun and then they also have two lazy rivers that are worthwhile to go check out um, so it's a great place it's very very fun um, it's right along the beach <laughs> so uh, you even if you're done with all of that you can go hang out in the actual water of Lake Erie too um, and that's always fun also so that like it's just a great place to be able to cool down on those hot days when you just want to rip your skin off even um those are the days when you definitely should enjoy being at cedar point shores and uh spending a lot of time there so it's definitely a fun thing and worthwhile for you to go check out you can also bring coolers into Cedar Point Shores, but they also have a couple of different places where you can eat. Your dining pass, if you have a dining pass, that is worthwhile um, there at Cedar Point Shores. So you can go check that out also if you'd like to do that. Um, it's definitely worthwhile one way or another. Now, Cedar Point does have a bit of a dress code and we're gonna get into that right now. The very first thing that we see um, with dress code is um, themed attire. So we're actually going through this from the website itself. Family oriented themed outfits or attire are permitted. So if you are dressed as a certain like 
like you all get t-shirts things like that the things i hate seeing <laughs> I, I i hate those I, I refuse to ever wear a themed shirt with my family um but other people obviously love doing it and if you love to do that then that's awesome uh you can do that kind of thing you cannot make yourself resemble any kind of park uh, character or any kind of park official uh, for the purposes of making sure that no one's you know trying to sneak backstage or anything like that any of those special outfits like that cannot be offensive or violent and cannot disrupt the general safety of guests or associates if you are wearing some sort of like a character themed outfit from something that doesn't exist inside the park that's okay but you cannot sign any kind of autographs for guests or anything like that inside the park because you're not trying to be them you're just dressed as them now i'm a little bit surprised that they don't say more than that uh, it does say uh, themed outfits and attire may be prohibited during halloween weekend events um and i believe if you are like a younger kid then it's never a problem but they don't want you pretending to be someone who's going to scare someone that's that's basically it it does say rides and attractions may also have additional restrictions on dress and attire so the water rides often guys will take off their shirts um girls around the whole park will wear uh like bikinis and bikini bottoms but usually with some sort of a cover-up sometimes it's like a see-through cover-up but they'll do that um guys you you can take your shirt off but only in that area only around that part of the park um now shirts open is kind of a it's a gray area i think so is having your shirt off in line it happens all the time um it's the same thing with girls and their kind of loose dress codes it really just kind of has to do with whatever they're told on that day uh, by workers and also on whether it's an incredibly hot day or not because sometimes there are crazy scorchers but guys having their shirts off in line is a very common practice and not usually something that you're going to get in trouble for in any way i've been told multiple times to button up like two buttons something like that um so if i do that you know always follow whatever the workers at cedar point tell you to do they're there for you um, so just do whatever they, they ask you to do. If you are on Frontier Trail, that's where, like I said, most of the water rides exist. If you are there, you can have your shirt off until you get to the uh, animal farm. And then I think you can have your shirt off all the way through Frontier Town. But again, if someone tells you to put on your shirt, then put on your shirt. It's pretty easy. Same thing I would say with women um with like if you're wearing a bikini or some sort of a see-through cover-up or something someone tells you to cover up something then cover it up don't worry about it just d don't put up a big fuss just do it um at least for that moment um since you are with with that person do what they've asked you to do throughout the seasons there is ridiculous amounts of just weather changes <laughs> you could be there on a spring day and it's raining as you come in and really cold and by the end of the day you are sweating like mad like it's just it's different every single day and you don't know which one you're actually going to get when you come to cedar point like it's, it's always a guessing game it's midwestern weather we play this guessing game every day so <laughs> if you come in um be prepared with something else to wear i would always recommend having a sweater in your car um maybe even a light jacket to make sure that you're warm enough one way or another because you may get one of those really cool summer evenings that you uh may be freezing more than you would expect to be um or also have some sort of versatile clothing i like to wear my button-up shirts because those i can unbutton if they're if i'm too hot and i can button them up if i'm cold so it gives me a really good option to be able to do that and i would recommend that with everybody do whatever you can like for girls maybe wear cami underneath i don't know is cami are cami still a thing <laughs> whatever you'd wear now something that's easy where you could take off an over shirt and then put on something else if you needed to having a change of clothes in the car is always good too just in case maybe you get really wet on a water ride 
and things are very uncomfortable, then you can go out, you can get changed before things get too difficult. Um, so those are definitely good options for you one way or another at Cedar Point. Always be prepared for as many options as you can take um, for having multiple different ways of changing your clothes or having something new and putting on some shorts. Now, one thing I would recommend that I've never really recommended before is always having some sort of cargo pants. Um, especially at this point, I think almost everyone is on their phone most of the time. And when you're on the phone very frequently, you may end up losing, especially if you're playing like heads up or things like that, then you may need some way to be able to restore your battery. Uh, with that, always be sure to have some sort of a battery charger um, with you. There are multiple places around the park where you can plug things in. And I have a video about that from last year also, the link down below or up above up here right now. But you guys should always be ready to be able to charge. And charging really on the fly, I think is the better option. I've had multiple of my uh, charger sticks even it just go like completely out of charge because I've been charging all day long and now I have even more equipment so it's going to be even more so having those cargo pants are always really good so that you can put stuff down in them and uh, not have it affect you being able to ride the ride um, because usually further down on your pant on your legs is uh, not going to affect whether or not you can ride the ride. Um, it's usually if your pockets are too full up up higher where your your hips are that that's where it's going to be a difficulty. Also, bringing a, a small bag may not be a bad idea. Lounge flies um, or uh, like you know, hip huggers or like a crossbody bag, those may be good options also for you. Now, one thing that I really quickly wanted to interject was the idea of bags. With bags, there are, first of all, a couple different options on places to store them. If you bring in bags, there are lockers at the very front of the park, you can store them there. Those lockers have different options. Um, you can get bigger lockers, you can get smaller lockers. So if you just want to store a bag for the entire day, say you have a book bag or something like that, that you want to store and not keep it in your car, then that is a great option for you and it would be a cooler place where things aren't going to melt or corrupt or things like that. If you are wanting to have that bag with you though, or maybe you have just something like a fanny pack or something smaller, um, then the options are limitless. You have all kinds of different places where you can rent hourly um, at Cedar Point. However, all of those are going to be a little bit smaller lockers. Um, you can rent them. It, it's like three hours, I think, uh, that you can rent them for. But then you do have to go back and you have to continue to either move them and pay again, or you have to get a new locker um, somewhere else. There are no like lockers for the full day anymore. They used to have a locker option for the entire day uh, where you could get one and then just move it with the same number. You just get into another one and then another one. Uh, they discontinued that several years ago. So that is not something that you can do anymore, unfortunately. But for bags, you know, having some sort of a sling over your shoulder kind of bag that you can carry, or even better, having some sort of a fanny pack or crossbody bag. Those are your best options. Uh, crossbody bags are really going to give you the best bang for your buck because you're allowed to have a fanny pack on almost every single ride. Um, you cannot have that on Steel Vengeance though. So getting into the line for Steel Vengeance, if you even have a fanny pack, they will be like, nope, go back. You can't, cause you can't put it in the line. Now, if you have small enough things that they can all fit in your pockets, I will take everything out of my fanny pack, stuff them into my pockets, and then walk into the line. And then they let me put that onto the lockers or into the lockers in line. Um, but they will not let you just bring a fanny pack in, uh, probably because they think that maybe you might have something that's too big to go into the lockers then inside of that. Um, but inside the lockers for Steel Vengeance, I mean, you have to put 
everything away. <laughs> like you have to put, you have to take off your glasses. You have to take off any lanyards that you have. You have to take off anything that possibly could move and could fly off. Um, so any anything like that. Now watches, I believe are okay. You can still wear a watch. Um, and you can wear glasses if you have a strap. Um, so as long as there's a strap around your head, then that's fine. It can even be a loose fitting strap, which seems counterproductive to me, but um, that is apparently okay also. Um, so those are kind of just the extra rules of Cedar Point to be aware of uh, one way or another. Now that you've figured out the basic planning stuff, now it's time to talk about where to stay at Cedar Point or near Cedar Point. You do have two basic options. Um, you can go with hotels that are owned by Cedar Point or hotels that are not owned by Cedar Point. And then the subcategory inside that is you can do like chains or you can also go to uh, mom and pop places. So let's talk about those just a little bit here. First of all, we'll talk about Cedar Point Hotels. Uh, with Cedar Point Hotels, you have really about five different options for staying on Cedar Point property. Um, now you can stay at the point very specifically and there you would have uh, Hotel Breakers or you would also have Lighthouse Point and then a third option would be staying at the marina. Now, of course, that's only for those who have boats. Um, and there is like an all year um, fee for being able to stay with boats. That actually comes if you stay on the marina, um, at the marina with... Um, with, with a boat, then you are also entitled to two um, prestige passes. I believe it was prestige passes um, that would get you in. Now, that's for a full year fee though. Um, that's not for if you're just staying for a weekend or something like that. Uh, so I don't know what the prices are. They did have a number that I'll put up on the screen right here where you can call that to find out about the marina if that's someplace you would like to go and uh, you actually wanna stay in a houseboat at Cedar Point. If that is the case, there is also a pool that you can use um, there on the marina. So it's basically like a little hotel that you have. Um, same thing goes with Lighthouse Point. Lighthouse Point is also a little hotel uh, that you can stay in that is camping RVs. Now, it, uh, there's like a very specific type of RV that you have to get, um, or you can also do the cabins. I'd love to stay at the cabins. It's kind of a dream of mine. I'd like to get like five or six guys and just hang out at the cabins there and, you know, cook our food over a fire and just have some fun hanging out down on the beach and stuff like that. Um, there are shower houses there also if you are in a camper, uh, so you can use that. But there are no tents. There's no tent camping, nothing like that. I'd love to see that kind of thing happen, but that is not something that Cedar Point has. Um, so those are options for you to be able to use though. You also can go to Hotel Breakers. Hotel Breakers is right down the same path, um, but it has multiple pools. Um, so it has like a kid's pool. It has, uh, I think three different hot tubs. Um, it has an indoor pool and it has two different out outdoor um, pools also. And then of course you're right there on the beach so you can always go swimming also from there. And you can even hear the water from your room window. Uh, so that's definitely fun. That's part of why that experience of staying at Hotel Breakers is something that's so coveted. Um, it is a very premier kind of an experience and it is very, very nice. The big drawback to staying at Breakers, uh, which I also think is somewhat similar to Lighthouse Point, but maybe lesser so at Lighthouse Point, is that there are tons of teens just everywhere. When you're at Breakers, I mean, the hot tub is just constantly packed with teenagers. So Hotel Breakers seems like it would be kind of a romantic getaway, a great place for adults to be able to hang out together um, and uh, be able to, you know, have kind of a, a nice little weekend together. Um, that's not really the experience that you're gonna have. Um, instead, if you wanted to have that kind of an experience, I would instead hightail it out of the point proper, I guess, and uh, either go, there are two options for a still on property hotels um, that are owned by Cedar Point 
and one of them is Breakers Express. That's right down Cedar Point Drive, um, and it is very, very nice. Um, you also have, I, sorry, actually there are three of them, and I think I forgot this one at the very beginning here. Um, there, you can stay also at Castaway Bay, which is Cedar Point's water park, indoor water park. Um, it's a fantastic place, and I've done an entire review there. I've also done it at uh, Breakers, uh, Breakers Express and Hotel Breakers too. Um, that is another thing. Hotel Breakers in the fall is much, much better. Like very few kids, it becomes like a nice little oasis, but it's not usually. The best oasis throughout the year though, and also for a much better price, is to go to Sawmill Creek. Sawmill Creek is a fantastic resort. Um, it's beautiful inside. It's maybe not the most premier looking resort, although there are some very beautiful spaces. The atrium is is primo. Like it's it's very, very great. Um, and then also a couple different dining places that are pretty fantastic also. Um, but when you're there, like my room, it, I only paid like $220 for my room, which is expensive. I don't like to even pay that much. But um, for what I got, it was a massive room and it also had a fireplace inside it. It just felt very, very over what I normally do <laughs> at hotels or what I normally get at hotels. So that was a fantastic place to go check out. I loved being able to stay at, at Sawmill Creek and the room was not the only great part of it. Uh, one of the better parts of it were all of the hot tubs and different alcoves in the pool that were just completely open. So Sawmill Creek does have an indoor pool and an outdoor pool. It's also open all year long, so it has that in its favor too. Uh, and they do like Christmas events, things like that at Sawmill Creek. Um, but staying there uh, during the season was very, very fun. And I was surprised at how few uh, teens or even just people were around at all. It was a fantastic morning for me to just hang out by the pool, have kind of a quiet place to be. Um, it's definitely a much more adult atmosphere. And I don't mean by that like it was raunchy or anything like that. It just feels very much like a business casual kind of a place um, where you're just gonna always have businessmen walking around, things like that. Um, it was a really nice place to go visit and I really enjoyed that a lot. Salmo Creek also has its own private beach, which I just found out about. Um, so definitely go take advantage of that too. If you're looking at Sawmill Creek, like there's its own entrance um, right there on the beach, which looks really cool. So take advantage of it and go see what it's like. I'll go check that out at some point this coming year also. Now staying with Cedar Point properties is going to come at a premium one way or another though. You're always gonna have a more expensive experience there. Um, with a few exceptions, there are a few off-campus uh, hotels that do get even more expensive sometimes. Um, but we will talk about some different options that are within these uh, different budgets. However, on the whole, staying off-campus is going to save you some money. Now, off-campus, you do have, of course, chains. These would be your Holiday Inns, your Great, Great Wolf Lodges even, your Comfort Inns, all that kind of stuff. And they're all a little bit different. Different. They also have different costs associated with them. Unfortunately, like the True by Hilton is incredibly expensive, like $400. It's a great hotel. It's a beautiful hotel even. Um, and inside, it's very, very nice. It's the same thing with the Holiday Inn Express, which is very, very close to Cedar Point, but it is a more expensive hotel. There are also a couple of other hotels. The Roadway Inn is an option. It's pretty cheap but it's not a nice place. Um, <laughs> there are some other places though. Um, the sleep in is fairly nice. There's, there's just a whole bunch of different ones. And then beyond that, you also have some mom and pop hotels. Now, one of those also is the like stables. Um, and I haven't stayed at that place in particular yet. There's a lot of places I have not gotten to stay yet. Also South Shore Inn, I've heard some really good things about. Haven't gotten to stay there yet. So maybe this next year that will be an option for me and I'll go check those out for you. Um, but keep, you know, press the subscribe button and come hang out with us because if you're wanting to know anything about Cedar Point, 
in the surrounding area, then I go on fact-finding missions to find it on this channel. So uh, you'll find out things about those different hotels uh, throughout the years as I continue to go visit more and more stuff around the area. As a matter of fact, I have a playlist right down here or up here for you to go check out of all the different hotels and actually on the channel itself, one of my tabs, if you scroll down my main channel page, is specifically for hotels. So go check those out. You'll find hotels from Orlando to Sandusky, um, but it's pretty easy to find the different Sandusky ones and the ones that are close by. So if you're looking for something that's really fantastic or you just wanna know what a variety of experiences are like, go check those out. That will definitely give you some information uh, that'll help you, that's kind of firsthand where you can actually see the room, you can see me in it, and you can see when ridiculous things happen, like a train running right through the room. At least that's what it felt like. Listen to that train. Or <laughs> like uh, the handle falling off when I went to Wolf Inn. Let's try it out. We're gonna check, test out this shit. Oh my word. So if you're looking for any of those and what maybe your options are, especially with some of the cheaper hotels, then definitely go check that out. Speaking of things around Sandusky that I have done to try to figure out as much in the surrounding area as I possibly can, I have tons of videos of the surrounding area and there are tons of things to do around Cedar Point. From the islands of Lake Erie to the Carousel Museum to Ghostly Manor to even just all the different places in downtown itself. Uh, there are just tons of places to go visit and it's definitely a fun place to go check out. Um, just Sandusky itself has a ton of different places. Now, downtown is kind of the main hub of different places where you can go. And I did a whole video on that where I checked out the alley. I checked out, they have a place called the Marketplace downtown. It's really cool. There's axe throwing in there and all kinds of different things that you can take advantage of. Uh, like if you're taking a day off in Sandusky or from Cedar Point, then you can go do some different fun things with that. If you go down to the Thirsty Pony, that is literally right at the end of Cedar Point Drive. Um, so as soon as you, if you're coming away from Cedar Point, as soon as you get to the end of that drive, it is on your right. It's smack dab there, like it's really hard to miss. There's even like a lookout tower at the top of it. There's a hotel associated with it also. That's what I called the stables earlier. Um, they have bowling in there. They have a bar in there. They have all kinds of different like darts and all kinds of different activities that you can do. I think they may even have like some laser tag. Uh, it is a massive place. There's tons of stuff to do and it's very family friendly. So it's definitely a fun place to go check out. Um, if you stay at the Holiday Inn Express that's right next door, uh, I had a window that looked out on people playing cornhole right in the like patio area of that place. Uh, so that's that's a fun place to go check out. I got to go see that last year and I didn't make a video about it though. So maybe I will make a video sometime, but it's definitely worthwhile to go see and uh, to have some fun with. So go check that out if you'd like to. But beyond that, you also have a ton of attractions on Milan Road. You have Ghostly Manor amusements, you have shops and uh, restaurants and stuff like that. Just kind of your basic like suburban stuff to eat, Applebee's, B-dubs, things like that. Um, and then you also have things like Kalahari, Great Wolf Lodge. Um, I did get to do a video on Ghostly Manor and Ghostly Manor has a ton of stuff in it also. And this is more family friendly. There's no bars in it, nothing like that. Um, but it is just solid family amusement. Uh, they have a virtual experience that you can do. Actually, they have a couple different virtual experiences, like a virtual movie where it's like 4D and things blow in your face and all that kind of stuff too. Um, and your seats move. Um, they have uh, roller skating there. They have a haunted house. Um, that it was just tons of stuff that you could do, along with an arcade that you can also do. Also around Halloween, they have a ton of attractions <laughs> there um, with additional haunted houses that they add. So if you even go there, you can see additional outbuildings where they have more and more attractions for Halloween stuff. So that's additional fun, spooky stuff that you can see if you go there. Now, other attractions that would still be available around Cedar Point also would be Puddin' Bay, Kelly's Island, 
um, Port Clinton, um, and then there are several other little um, places. Catawba has uh, some really cool stuff and even like a little fort there. I don't really know what's in it because I haven't gone to visit it yet, but I went past it. I heard Taylor sing in Catawba this last year. There are bars and restaurants all over the place in these little like coastal towns. Uh, so it's definitely fun to go check that out. Um, there was a little city that I went to this last year and stayed on River's Edge at Comfort Inn um, that was a beautiful little town and a great hotel also for a lot cheaper. If you get outside of Sandusky itself, then the hotels get a lot cheaper also. Um, you know, there's just tons of stuff that you can find uh, that really makes things fun to be able to go visit. Um, so definitely worthwhile to go explore around Cedar Point just a little bit. Not to mention you could also take advantage of water sports. You could rent some sort of a pontoon or things like that. Like there's just so many options on Lake Erie that you really could plan an entire week to spend at Lake Erie and not run out of things to do. All right, now this is the part that you've all been waiting for, the discussion of Top Thrill 2 and how we're actually gonna get to Top Thrill 2 this year, or at least the strategies that I have. Hopefully this will get you thinking just a little bit about what the strategies will be for you. Um, I'm not totally sure exactly how this is all gonna work, and we're gonna have to figure it out together. But these are my initial thoughts on strategies, not just for Top Thrill 2, but kind of to hit all of the major rides this year. So Top Thrill 2 is going to be absolutely massive this year. I mean, there's no way around it. It is going to be four hour lines. Like if it's not four hour lines, I'll eat this at. I <laughs> I will be very surprised if I never see a four hour line. Um, it's going to be a very, very busy thing. The hype is real and it is massive for this ride. Um, and people are ready for it to come back. Now that, plays positively for a couple of other things. For instance, Wild Mouse will not nearly have the lines that it had this last year. Even at the end of the year last year, it did not have the lines that it had last year. <laughs> so um, it, that's something that would definitely be helped. It will also draw crowds away and eat crowds from the park. So it'll help you to do some other small things. That being said, it will also probably drive up the crowd levels at Cedar Point just all together. Um, throughout the year, I imagine a lot of people have been waiting on this year to buy their tickets and to buy their passes for Cedar Point, which also would explain why Cedar Point it kind of made things a bit more expensive by eliminating the Platinum Pass and giving early entry to only um, the Prestige Pass holders for this year. Um, and I don't think that they limited the amount of prestige pass holders that they could get. Um, so you just have to shell out the money for prestige pass. You don't have any, any intermediate option anymore. Um, so beyond that, this is going to be a much more um, crazy place to hang out. Um, it is going to be very worthwhile to go check out those weekdays. Of course, weekdays are always going to be your best option. And weekdays are the time when you need to try to come to Cedar Point this year. Um, definitely worthwhile and it's going to be your best bet. Um, that being said, that doesn't mean that there are going to be no um, crowds <laughs> even on those days. I would still expect fairly hefty crowds, especially in the summers for those Thursdays for Halloween weekends. Also going to be another really solid option. Again, doesn't mean it won't have crowds, but it may be a little bit better um, than your normal weekends would be. First of all, we have to talk about early park entry just a little bit. Um, I am doubting, I, I don't know, but I'm doubting that Top Thrill 2 will be early park entry. I'd love it to be. I just have a feeling that they know that there's gonna be some downtime for Top Thrill 2, which means they're going to need to really take time to iron things out and to have a little bit of time in the mornings to make sure that they have it running smoothly before everyone else gets on. This year, I would expect it's gonna be maybe even more of the same, or it would be a couple of kind of the, the normal rides, um, Millennium Force, maybe Raptor, um, maybe even Val Raven that would be your early park entry rides 
Um, but we'll see which ones they release and stay tuned to this channel because as soon as I find out what those early park entry rides are going to be, then I'll let you know. As of filming this video, Cedar Point has not yet released what the early park entry schedule is going to be. So like I said, keep tuned. Like I said, I don't think Cedar Point will use Top Thrill 2 as a an early park entry, but let's just assume that they do. I would love it if they do. I think that would be awesome. I just think that they know that Top Thrill 2 is going to be a draw one way or another, but it would be a good way to get people to buy prestige passes, so I could be wrong about that. If they use Top Thrill Dragster as an early park entry ride, then it's definitely going to be a good place uh, to go straight there and try to get that. I would still expect massive lines, but at least you're gonna get an hour line rather than a three or four hour line for Top Thrill 2. Um, so I would say that's kind of a good use of your of your early park entry time, if that is the case. If they don't do that, then if you come in on time, then of course hit as much as you possibly can. Um, I am never someone who's going to be a proponent of standing in a stagnant line waiting for that ride to open. Um, there would be two options. You could either, of course, buy the all day fast lane or buy the, I would assume, $35, maybe $40 uh, single use fast lane to get your one ride done on uh, Top Thrill 2. I would definitely think that would be worthwhile. Um, and it's going to save you a little bit of money over the cost of your all day fast lane, which would probably be 250 to maybe even more than that. So I would definitely recommend a single day fast lane if that's going to be the case, especially if that would help make your day more smooth. Uh, of course, also, if you have a prestige pass, then you get one extra fast lane that you can use every single day, no matter what, when you're in the park. So that may also be a good option for you to use that um, on those days. However, I don't think that's your only option. Um, one thing that I think often helps is, like I said, you're gonna have a draw of a ton of people going to Top Thrill 2, which means you're gonna have other rides that are a little bit smaller. So maybe go hit some of the other smaller rides, go hit those as quickly as you can. Go hit Millennium Force at a 20 minute wait before it becomes a 60 minute wait later, maybe. Or you can also make sure that you hit some of the other rides along the Gemini Midway uh, quickly before everything becomes crazy. So those like the kind of middling places are some of the best ones to go hit first. Um, as a general rule, I would say usually skip everything from the front of the park. Now, if you see Raptor has a very short line, we're talking like a 10 minute line, then go hop in it if you want to, uh, that's fine. But often people see the big green thing on the skyline and they just immediately go, oh, hey, there's a ride, we need to ride that one. It's the first one we see. So they hop in that line and they end up with like hour and 15 minute waits early on in the morning every single day when you know by the end of the day it's gonna drop down to 15 minute waits. Um, if you see inordinately long lines at the very beginning of the day, then usually that means that they're going to come down to earth later on that day. So that's your time to go hit those rides when that is the case. But if you can hit all of the main rides and then you have maybe three hours left in your day at the end of it, then go hop in to line at Top Thrill Dragster or make Top Thrill Dragster the very last thing that you do that day or maybe the last thing you do within the last hour of that day. The reason why I say that is sometimes, not always and not even usually, but sometimes if different rides have massive, massive lines, Cedar Point will close them down before the end of the night. And it happened often during COVID, but COVID as we know was kind of a different time. Um, so maybe that's the better option to do something like that at the very end of the day and wait your longest wait at the very end. That way you freed up your entire day to do everything else that hopefully will have a little bit shorter lines. Um, now, like I said, it, Crowds are unpredictable and they always can be a little bit different than what you expect them to do. One of your best bets in figuring out what your strategies should be is to follow along on this channel because I'll be at Cedar Point about once a week 
um, to release videos. I mean, I release a video every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday now. So uh, there's always something new coming out. So if you're looking for some additional information on that, especially up-to-date information about what's happening in the park, then you will see me go through these things and try to figure out different strategies to ride Top Thrill 2 throughout the year. Anyway though, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. What will be the best way to ride Top Thrill Dragster? Um, and also what tips or tricks have been helpful. Also, are there questions that you have? I'm sure even after this long video, I'm sure there's still more questions that you guys have want to ask and I would love to answer them for you either down in the comments or with another video. So please let me know what questions you have. I'll be more than glad to do any kind of deep dives or figure out really specific things about Cedar Point and I don't even care if it's like particularly marketable. I just like to find the weeds. <laughs> Get into the weeds of Cedar Point and explain things to you guys as much as I possibly can so that you know what to expect when you come to Cedar Point for your theme park day. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, this has been a really fun, long two outfit day <laughs> or video. I guess it's been two days to do it, but uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out today. And uh, I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Drop that like, because if you made it this far, then you definitely like something and let's go. Hey, thanks for watching. I release theme park related videos at least a couple times a week, so press that subscribe button if you made it this far. Also, check out similar videos in the playlist to the right or find my newest video to the left. Thanks again and let's go!